everything the Democrats are running on for November is a lie. They have nothing good to show for the last four years, so they make things up and hope that you don't catch on. In this video, I'm going to expose their biggest lies about crime, DEI, and tax cuts. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to unravel the tangled web of lies the Democrats are spinning for November. They have nothing to show for the past four years, so they've resorted to making things up. And boy, they are really hoping that you don't notice. But don't worry, we're here to blow their cover wide open. First up, let's talk about crime. The Democrats are gaslighting you, America. They're telling you that crime is down, especially in their liberal strongholds like Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York City. Well, we know that it's not true. All you got to do is read the papers or watch the real news. These cities are practically crime capitals thanks to Democrat policies. Here is Mark Morgan, an American law enforcement official who served as chief operating officer and acting commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Patrol from July 2019 through January 2021. In this following video, Mark explains how the Democrats are getting away with claiming that crime is going down in their jurisdictions. What I would say is the database is good to have within the database. The, the failure comes in and is to make a report, generate a report based on that database that you know is fundamentally flawed. It's the old garbage in, garbage out theory. And let me give you an example. In 2019, Jan, about 90% of the law enforcement agencies submitted crime data. Fast forward to 2021, less than 63% of those agencies reported crime data. And as you mentioned earlier, the big three, Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago last year, submitted no data. And Guys, so the reason why crime statistics are down in these blue havens, well, it's simple. They just stopped reporting on crime. While the, the FBI's report has caveats, it's simply not enough. When you have over 40%, almost 40% of the agencies not provide the data, the, the report is fundamentally flawed. It should not have been reported in its current format. And, and I want to add. Yeah, and you heard it right, folks. The crime stats in these cities are manipulated by simply not reporting them. Just like Mayor Fast Eddie Rendell of Philadelphia did in 2000 to snag the Republican National Convention, he told his cops, the district commanders, to tell their officers to not report certain types of crimes so that they could lower the crime rate. It's disgusting. All right, let's move on to DEI, which stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Sounds lovely, right? Well, think again. DEI is essentially a policy of reverse discrimination against white workers and business owners. I don't care what the lefties tell you. That's what it is in reality. It's all about skin color, sexual orientation, who you want to go to bed with, all the other irrelevant factors that have nothing to do with merit. But brace yourselves because the absurdity is just starting. Here is Representative Matt Gates of Florida just destroying this guy who came in to testify who believes in DEI for his company. Give it a watch. Turns to your investors. I think part of good governance of a company is having diverse perspectives brought to bear as they manage that company. And I feel strongly about that for the investment team that I lead. Also, we want diverse Terrific. perspectives. And, and, and what is the evidence that, that, that you rely on for the belief that... I love this, guys. And, and there's, there's a head twist at the end. He's asking, what's the evidence that you have? Can you point to an article or something, stats, that say that DEI actually increases the bottom line for a company? Because, guys, that's what your bottom line should be. With a company, it should be increasing, okay? DEI is going to destroy, it should be called DIE because every company is going to die if we don't get rid of this, but watch this. The DEI agenda will produce better returns. Is there any study, report, analysis? You know, as an investor, I read research reports constantly. I probably read five, six, eight of them a day. So uh, over the course of my career, that's probably been thousands. I know, I'm, I'm just reports. wondering, is there one that kind of sticks in out in your mind? You can say, Congressman, I'm here to do good by these 2.2 million beneficiaries and my embrace of DEI. This is what I can point to as the evidence that, that that's helping them. <laughs> Every database study can tell lots of different things and every data <laughs> works that way. That's the way investing works. And he can't pinpoint any study. So he's bullshitting. Remember that when we're focused on investing, we're focused on how we- Mr. Bambi, you, you can either cite a study or you can't. You can't, right? Okay. In the thousands of studies that I- but Just name one, okay. Through, well, here's I what, I found something. a study that actually CalPERS did. Watch this. You guys did this study, it's entitled- 
In other words, he's saying, your company did this study that I found. And I'm going to tell you what the results are. Where do you hear this? Emerging diverse manager data report. And, and, and I'm citing from the uh, sixth page of report where it says, since inception, current diverse managers generally underperformed non-diverse managers in the asset class in the policy benchmark. Are you familiar with this report? Can I see a copy of that study? <laughs> Man, you can't make this stuff up. So Gates says, do, do you have a study specifically you can point to that shows that DEI is great for a company's bottom line? And he goes on to bullshit because he doesn't. There isn't one. There isn't one out there by a legitimate company that could do stats on it, right? So then he says, well, don't worry. I found one, and it's your company that actually did it. And guess what? Your company's study said that DEI is crap. Oh, man, you can't make this stuff up. Guys, these are the things that Joe Biden and his administration are pushing. They, they think that you're stupid. They, they, they think that they can tell these kinds of lies and get away with them anymore. So the final thing I want to talk about is they're saying the Trump tax cuts are why our economy is bad. Can you believe this? They think that people are so dumb that they haven't figured out yet that tax cuts actually increase government revenues. I mean, it's an old chestnut. Tax cuts for the rich, they cause deficits. Let me tell you something. When you have tax cuts, what happens is companies get more money that they can keep and they create new businesses or they expand their current one. And when they create new businesses or expand, they have to hire new employees to run those businesses or expansions. And what do those new employees do? That's right. They pay taxes. See, it's Democrats spending that's out of control that causes the problem. Spending is always causing deficits. The definition of a deficit is outspending your income. Now, imagine this. Suppose you're holding a box. And you take a dollar bill and you put it in the box and close the lid. Now you got a buck in there, right? So this guy comes down the street and he has popsicles. He's selling them. You say, how much? He goes, a dollar. You open the box, you pull the dollar out and you hand him the dollar. He gives you a popsicle. That's called commerce. That's spending, right? Now, suppose you didn't put that dollar in the box. Same guy walks down and you go, hey, how much? And he goes, a dollar. And you go, I ain't got a dollar. The guy keeps walking on. Did that cause anything to happen with spending? Did that cause a deficit? It certainly did not. It meant that you just couldn't get the popsicle because you didn't have the dollar in the box. Democrats want you to believe that tax cuts lower government revenues when the exact opposite has always been true. Don't take my word for it. Go to the tax foundation and look at it for yourself. Every time tax cuts were made, guess what? Government revenues went up. Every single time it's been tried. What a Democrat is really telling you is that we don't like the fact that you, the worker who earned the money that we take, that you're going to get more of it because we want you dependent on our spending. And what they're saying is no matter what, we're going to spend money. We want to spend more of your money. So that tax cut, you're taking that away from our opportunity to spend on programs so that we can buy votes. That's what they're doing. Remember the Reagan era? Well, there was this thing called a Democratic Party prank known as President Jimmy Carter. Under him, he had 70% tax rates. Now, what does that mean? That means that business owners knew that they could only keep 30 cents out of every dollar that they earned after a certain amount. And they were like, screw that. That's not worth it. So what did they do with their money? Well, they did what the Kennedys always did, and they hid it inside like tax-free municipal bonds, things like that. And then better times came along in 1980 when Ronald Reagan defeated Jimmy Carter and he lowered the rate from 70 to 28 percent. Now, they're like, whoa, I get to keep 72 cents out of every dollar. Way to go. So what did they do? They released their money from the tax shelters and they invested them. And what happened? Businesses flourished, jobs were created and the government revenues soared. Tax cuts work. Democrats just don't want you to keep more of your hard-earned money. They want to spend it for you. All right, guys, smash that like button. If you think exposing these lies is crucial and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, please share our videos with like-minded friends who want to stay informed with what's really going on. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Too many secrets, too many closed doors, my sister cover-ups.